Dr. Saurav Chakrabarti, working as an associate professor in the computer science group at the Chennai Mathematical Institute, Tamil Nadu. Before joining Chennai Mathematical Institute, he was a postdoctorate at the Algorithms and Complexity Department of CWI, Amsterdam, Netherlands. He was a postdoctorate at the Computer Science Department of Technion, Israel. He was awarded PhD in Computer Science from University of Chicago. His area of research is theoretical computer science. His focus has been in the classical and quantum complexity of Boolean functions, including property testing, sensitivity, block sensitivity of Boolean functions, and quantum database search in electronic commerce, in graph algorithms, and in coding theory. He has published several research papers in both national and international journals. Welcome to the UGC lecture series in computer science, and the topic is algorithms. So today we will be looking at best first search and we will be looking at this application of best first search to finding the shortest path. So let us start with the usual definition of a graph. A graph is a set of vertices which is a v1 to vn and we have been given the edges which are a set of pairs of vertices. In the basic definitions we have a graph that is given as v, e v is a set of vertices and e is a set of edges. If u v is in the edge set, that implies that v u is in the edge set. In this case, we call this one as an undirected graph. Sometimes for the edges, we can have some weighted allocated to it and we call that as weighted graph. If there is an edge from u to v, then we say v is a neighbor of u and the number of neighbors a vertex has is called the degree of that vertex. For example, here we have a set of vertices represented as nodes in a plane. Usually graphs are represented in a pictorial manner in this form where the vertices are represented as nodes. And the edges which are pairs of vertices are represented by edges by lines straight lines or curved lines at joining those two vertices. For example, here say is an undirected graph where there is an edge between A and B meaning that A comma B is an edge. Similarly, there is an edge between B and E that means there is an B comma E is an edge, but there is no edge between B and F what implies that b comma e is not an edge in this graph. We can have weights here and we can also have this directed weighted directed edges. Directed edges implies that there is an arrow which says that there is an arrow from d to a implies that d comma a is an edge. But since there is no directed edge from a to d or there is no arrow from a to d that means a comma d is not an edge. As we have seen in the last three lectures, graphs are a very important combinatorial objects. They are very simple, but yet very general. Many real life problems can be formulated as graph theory problems. And so, understanding the general structure of graphs is a very important aspect in the field of algorithms. Now, one of the most basic notions in graphs is the connectivity. We say that two vertices are connected if there is a path from one vertex to the another. In an undirected graph setting, if there is a path from u to v, then there is a path from v to u. So, if u is connected to v in an undirected graph, then v is also connected to u. So, set of all vertices that are connected to u is called the connected component of this vertex. The connected component, the graph can be seen as a disjoint union of these various connected components. Another very important concept is the concept of tree. A graph, connected graph that does not have a cycle is called a tree. A tree has some other properties. For example, a tree always has 
the number of vertices minus 1 edges. It also has that if a tree touches all the vertices, then it is called a spanning tree and every connected graph has a spanning tree. In the case of directed graphs, things are slightly more complicated. For example, if you, there is a directed path from u to v, it does not mean that the, there is a directed path from v to u. So, if we say that a graph has no cycle, means a no directed cycle, in that case we call that graph acyclic and we have similarly a notion of strongly connectedness depending on the directed paths. And the problems of this directed graphs, undirected graph setting are that given a graph, is this graph connected or given a graph, does it has a cycle. In this case of undirected graph, it does not matter what kind of cycle it is, just a cycle. And also given a graph, can you find the spanning tree? In the last two lectures, we saw that the answer to all of them can be done with the algorithm called depth first search. But as we have seen that depth first search is just an algorithm for finding one spanning tree. The similar set of questions can be done for undirected graphs and again we will get something for this depth first search. Depth first search is very useful for understanding whether a graph is acyclic or not. Another important notion which is very important is the concept of distance. So, I have a path from say u to v, we say that the length of the path is the number of edges in this path. So, distance between u to v is the length of the shortest path from u to v. For example, here say we have this graph and consider this path, this is a directed path from g to a. The path length of this path is 4, whereas the, this is not the smallest one because I have a smaller path. The question is that what is the shortest distance between u to v? So, I have given you a vertex u and a vertex v and I ask what is the shortest distance from u to v. Also, what is the shortest distance of any vertex from v? So, it is something like in the case of real lines, if you have noticed carefully, beside the tracks they have the post which writes down what is the short, which is distance from that point to the nearest big station. So, you say you are close to Delhi, it will say that what is the distance from that line to the to Delhi, but it turns out that there can be many paths from that that station to Delhi. So, what is written there? What is written there is the shortest distance from Delhi. So, for in this case say v is Delhi and we want to find out the distance or the shortest distance of all the other uh, stations from Delhi and how will you do it. We need to have another algorithm what is known as the best breadth first search. Breadth first search is exactly the depth first search and it is used to produce a spanning tree. It has a lot of applications. Depth first search had this notion that it started from a vertex and looked at it ran as long as it could till it hit a blocking point or a dead end and then it came back and looked for it. So, it searched in a depth first way, it went for the depth. The best first search does the opposite, it first looks at all of its neighbors and then all of their neighbors and so on. So, the idea of best first search is again start from a vertex, find all its neighbors, let us look at the, all the neighbors of its first vertex and so on and so forth. So, the best first search is very similar to the depth first search and finally, it will output a spanning tree. So, just in the case of the depth first search, we had used the concept of a stack in the case of breadth first search, we will have to use something called a queue. A queue 
is a data structure which basically kind of represents how a queue occurs. So, how does a queue occur? Say you are gone to a shop and you are standing in a queue or a ticket counter and standing in a queue. The idea is the person who enters first is the first person to leave. So, thus it is called this first in first out kind of concept. In the case of stack you remember it was like a pile of books the one that came last it was put on top and when we had to take it out we had to take that one out first It's called the last in first out. Whereas, this one is a first in first out kind of concept where we have a queue which represents how this things will enter and exit. So, in other words whenever I have to put something in the queue I will put it at the end of that queue and whenever we have to take it out we will take out from the front of the queue. Just for our explanation in this lecture I will not be taking it out instead I will moving a pointer which will kind of indicate where is the start of the. Okay, so, let us look at the example of this breadth first search say we start from the vertex h. First of all we color this vertex h and put it on the queue as I told you that this arrow will indicate what is the start of the queue. Now, we take this first element of this queue which is h and we look at all its neighbors. So, for example, in it has only one neighbor g and it takes that all the neighbors which is g and puts it in the queue and once it is done with h it just moves it out. So, to indicate that we have moved the pointer to g. So, now g is in some sense you can think of the first element of the queue. Now, at this point what would have depth first search done? Note that till this point depth first search and breadth first search would have been done the same amount. At this point depth first search would have found out one neighbor of g looked at it then we looked at another neighbor of that element and looked at it and go and on. But instead in the case of base first search what is done is that we will first look at g and look at all its neighbors. So, what are these neighbors? Its neighbors are e and f. So, it first say takes the neighbor e and puts it in this queue and it takes its neighbor f and puts it in the queue and when it is done. So, now g has put all of them in the queue and it is done with it and throws away g out of the queue. So, at this point we are left with the queue when we have e and f. So, think, think of it this way g has looked at all its neighbors it has placed all its neighbors in this queue. Now, it is going to take out the first element of the queue which is in some sense the first element the first neighbor of g and it will look at all the neighbors of e. So, instead of looking at one neighbor of e and then going and then to that neighbor and then going one more from that neighbor instead of that what it is doing is that it is starting at a vertex and taking all the neighbors of that vertex. So, when we are at that neighbor e it first look at say the neighbor c we puts it in the queue if uh, since c has not been looked at at all then again it looks at another neighbor b it has not looked at it at all. So, it says b is, un, is not blue and again it also looked at this vertex d and it will put this vertex d in this queue. At this point e it has been e's work is done and then e would be moved out of this queue. Now, what is the next one? the next element in this queue is f. At this point f has two neighbors. So, it looks at first this neighbor, but since e has been already been marked blue it will not take this neighbor and again same it will be doing for the neighbor which is d and in that case it would be done with it and will move to c. Now, c again will have these two neighbors that will let c which has done and then will move to d and d will have its one neighbor which is finds 
and so this way we will be getting PFS tree. Let us take a small break now. After the break, we will look at the applications of breast first search. Welcome back after the break. Before the break, we saw the algorithm for breast first search. The basic idea is that as soon as it looks at a vertex, it looks at all its neighboring vertices and then goes accordingly. So that's why it's called the breadth because it looks at the breadth first instead of the depth. So just to look at the pseudocode of it, the operations of the Q are that we have two operations. We have this NQ which basically puts the element in the back of the Q and we have another thing called a DQ which will remove the earliest from that Q. And using that we can obtain a pseudocode. It is exactly same object. We first start with a Q which is empty. We will first color vertices gray. As soon as we see a, uh, we put the first vertex in the Q, then as long as this Q is not empty, we first DQ that element. Once we DQ that element, we will look at all its neighbors and now here is the important part that for all neighbors it will do that. For all neighbors if the color is gray it would basically that vertex has not been looked at. It would color this vertex blue, it will select that edge, it would enqueue that edge into the stack and the usual thing of removing it from the neighboring set. So, instead of looking at just picking one vertex and doing something, it looks at all the vertices and puts it together. So, what is the advantage of this algorithm? Intuitively, the advantage is that say you are at your home and you want to check your neighborhood. There is two ways of doing it, correct? You take a long walk. You walk, walk, walk till you find something and you look at, look, uh, find out what and it come back a little bit and then again go till you hit another dead end and so on. That is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is you first look at all the things that are to be done at a distance of less than one step from your place. Then once you have done that or just one block away, you look at all the things to be done. Then you go to the pick up one of the blocks, you go to, to that block and you look at all of the places that are close to that block and so on. So, you are just not taking a long walk, but you are searching it in a very more systematic way as in some sense. So, this is what BFS does. Of course, just like the case of DFS or depth first search, BFS also checks for the connectivity. If u is connected to v, then BFS will someday or other find out the age or directed path from u to v or v to u whichever is you are looking for. It is exactly same as what DFS does. There are two kind of edges only, there are tree edges and non tree edges and nothing more complicated than that. There is nothing concept of back edges or forward edges. Although this non tree edges can be looked at as some two classifications of edges which we will see later on in possibly next lectures. Regarding the runtime of this algorithm again since each edge is visited at most twice. So, the runtime will be again linear in the size of the input which is order v plus e. So, let us look at an application of PFS. So, for all vertices in the graph, I want to find the shortest path from V. This is something as I told is a very important thing, one can imagine why. The idea is that we run the BFS algorithm and note the distance by saying the distance of any vertex is one more than the distance of its parents. Now, what do I mean by the distance? Just to indicate it. So, here say I have this graph 
and so on. Now, if this is my vertex V, so I am looking at all the graph, uh, all other vertices at distance from V. If this vertex has is at distance i, then what is this vertex is? The claim is that this vertex must be at distance. This is i and is i plus one. So this vertex must be one more than the parent, which is this. And that's basically how we would try to find out. Let's, for example, do the same thing. Go over the BFS algorithm, but this time we maintain one more counter. So we start with h, and we say that the distance of h is zero. Because of course, distance of h from h is zero, and we are trying to find out the distance of all other vertices from h. Now we look at the first vertex here, which is h. And look at its all its neighbors. It only has only only one neighbor G, so we take that G and put it in the stack, in the queue. And since G is being approached from H, so we say that the distance of G from H is whatever distance of H was from itself plus one, so which is in this case one. Now let's look at the vertices of G. Now this G, I will look be looking at. The two neighbors, E and F. So we first look at E. Now E is untouched, so we put it back. And at the same time, since E is being approached from G, so distance of E from H is distance of G from H plus one. Distance of G from H is already noted as one. So distance of E from H is one plus one is two. Now G looks at its other neighbors, which is F. And same thing, f being approached from G, so I will note the distance of f from H as two. Now let's look at the vertex E. For well, vertex E, it has three neighbors, C, D, C, B, and D. So I look at C, and now distance of C is from I write it as three because it is. Distance of E plus one is three. Now one might ask that why is the distance of C from H three? Why can't it be lower? How can it be lower? It can be lower if, say, for example, there was a path from the H from G to C. If there was an H from G to C, I would have got a distance of length just two. But if there was a path from G to C, then C would have been discovered. When we were working with G, then C would have been a neighbor of G, and hence C would have been listed right there. So that's basically crucial. That if something is at distance k, then this vertex will surely have to be found out by a vertex of whose distance is k minus one. So let's. Go over it again. So here we are looking at this edge E vertex E. We are looking at vertex E. We look at the second neighbor of E, which is B, and we write it as distance from B to H is again three because distance of E is two, and so B is two plus one is three. Similarly for D. And now we look at F. F of course doesn't have any edge left which to a Untouched edge, and so we don't change anything. Similarly for C, and similarly when you look at B, we will have an A. Now B is marked as three, so A must be marked. Distance must be four. Again, to repeat my argument, why can't A's A's distance be four? It be less than four, which is a three. Now A's distance can be less than three if That means that there is a path from H to A of length three, but if there is a path from H to A of length three, then that means there must be an intermediate vertex at distance two from which I can A can be approached. And in that case, when that vertex was being looked at, A would have been discovered, and that was not the case. So, in other words, this is how one can use the BFS to find the shortest. Path from 
h to any vertex. The runtime of this algorithm is also very simple. It is again just order v plus e because it is the BFS only. So, this BFS now therefore can be used for finding the connected components in an undirected graph just as DFS does. It can be used to check if there is a path from u to v again B DFS would have done the same thing and it is used to compute the shortest distance from any vertex. This is something that DFS would not have been able to do, but breast first search can do it. To summarize, we did look at the breast first search algorithm and then we looked at the application of breast first search to finding the shortest path in a graph. So, this brings us to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we will be looking at more graph algorithms. Thank you.